orgasms or lack thereof. <laughs> Not funny. We all want to come. If you have never had an orgasm, keep watching this video. Today we are talking about female orgasmic disorder, also sometimes called anorgasmia. This is characterized by either delay in frequency or absence of orgasm or decreased intensity of orgasmic sensations in 75 to 100% of all sexual encounters and causing significant distress. And yes, it can be very distressing. Now there are varying stats in terms of the frequency of uh, female orgasmic disorder. What I see most commonly is 15% or one in 10, so somewhere between 10 and 15% of all women. However, I believe that this is probably more a reflection of North American or Western standards. There was one study done by the International Society of Sexual Medicine and they said that rates even within the Western world, within Europe and then North, Central and South America, rates were closer to 16 to 24% of women. And then within Asia, the rates were actually between 30 to 46% of women were experiencing female orgasmic disorder. Sorry, there was no mention of Africa or Oceania in that particular study, but I know that you guys are having sex too. Perhaps you are orgasming every time, in which case, you know, kudos to all of you down under. But if you are having sex and you're living in one of those continents and you are not having orgasms, don't worry, you are not alone. The rest of us are neither. It is actually very common, regardless of which stats we are looking at, even one in 10 is still quite a few women that are experiencing this worldwide. And there are a lot of different factors that we look at. As a sex therapist, I always consider biological, psychological, sociocultural, intergenerational, generational and relational issues that contribute to not being able to orgasm. So getting to the root of why you specifically may be dealing with this in your life right now is a very personal experience and exploration that I would highly recommend talking to a counselor or a sex therapist about. I actually do do one-on-one -on -one online counseling within North America. And so if you do live in North America and you're interested in talking to somebody about this, I've listed my private practice uh, email contact below. It's just Kendra at eatsquatcom.com. You can always reach out to me or just a sex therapist or another counselor in your area. However, if there is one blanket thing that I think would be important for all females to hear, really whether you're orgasming or not at this point, it would be this. We are grossly undereducated when it comes to female sexuality and arousal. I mean, sex in general, we get shortchanged on in the education department for sure, but female bodies and their arousal process in particular is almost non-existent from any sort of formal, reputable curriculum. If you are getting sex education, it's kind of like, here's your fallopian tubes and this is your period and like wear a condom so you don't get knocked up and syphilis sucks. But absolutely nothing on arousal or pleasure or, you know, joy that can come from sexual union and experiences. Yeah, I've beefed about this before on this channel and to be honest, I will probably beef about it again, but we need better sex education. I will create curriculum. Anyways, to make matters worse, the sex that we then see portrayed in mainstream media, movies, and porn follows the male arousal process. So we don't get formal education on what arousal is and what that looks like. And then the only images that we really get exposed to are very penis centric. And all of the women in these images just seem completely attuned to this penis process that is, and that's completely unrealistic. So generally speaking, that is the male arousal process. It is a slow linear climb to orgasm and then there is orgasm and then there is like decline, orgasm is gone, arousal is gone. Now it actually is possible for men to experience multiple orgasms, which is something else that is left out of sex education for male bodies that would be beneficial for them to know about, but I will save that for another video. Coming to you soon. But for the sake of this video, we are gonna talk about that male arousal process. So it's just, we get steamed up, we come and then the sex, she is done. And that actually does work for most men. And so it is expected that that should also work for female bodies. And that if it doesn't, that is actually their problem and that there is something wrong with you. The female arousal pathway is different than that which the male arousal pathway denotes. And so instead of trying to squeeze ourselves into that arousal experience and, and path, I think it is better to maybe explore a new path. And that path usually begins with slowing 
down. Studies have shown that female bodies can take anywhere from, you know, 20 minutes upward to 40 or 45 minutes to become fully aroused. And so giving yourself that time to slowly build arousal within your body is so crucial to enjoying sex and eventually being able to reach orgasm. So that requires us not only to slow down or request that our partner as well slow down, but that we go into our body and we allow ourselves to feel and experience what is going on there as opposed to thinking about what is not going on there. So it's enjoying and noting all of the small early signs of slow arousal that will build and blossom and grow if we keep our mind's eye and attention there as opposed to being like we're not feeling enough right now and this feels a little bit okay but not enough okay and why am I taking so long and what are they thinking and what is wrong with me and then and then all of the feeling and sensation just goes and certainly does not grow. So instead of shaming your body for not experiencing sex the way you think that you are supposed to, try to accept what is happening and what sensation you are feeling, even if it's really small, and just focus on and bless that sensation with your attention. That is easier said than done though. I mean, when, when, when we're in the middle of a sexual experience with a partner, it's hard to, you know, be meditating on our pelvis. So one of my suggestions would be to practice that on your own. And a simple way to do that is with a body-based practice called the pelvic rock. You breathe down into the pelvis and you slowly rock it to focus on arousal and slow building of pleasurable sensation. I have a guided audio practice that will take you through that. The link is below, so check that out. It is great for increasing arousal and more importantly, increasing your awareness of your own arousal process. That is all I have for you for today. I know I just scratched the surface of this issue, so if you've got more questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. You can also email us. All of the emails are down below for you. Also, check out our Patreon page so that we can keep creating this free content for you. We love to do it. Thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, eat, squat, and come.